Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, and welcome to another Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons. But don't worry, we're gonna figure out what those reasons are. Reason number one, this guy just bought a Galil when he had money for an AK-47. This is Jay Sink, ignore the name right in front of him. He's a Master Guardian 1, that's here. His favorite fish is salmon. He had some very specific questions. So keep in mind, guys, they're very brave to send these in, so don't mock how they're playing. Uh, what is he doing? No! What is he just... Oh, no! Oh, man. Okay, that is not... That is not how you do that. All right. So we're going to hop back there and figure out exactly what happened. Okay, so we're back at this round. We're going to slow it down. We're going to figure out what his mistakes were there. And uh, as we see... He has the money for an AK-47, uh, but instead is going to be purchasing a Galil. That is a huge mistake. And one of his specific questions that he asked, because people were telling him, why are you buying the Galil, is, should I avoid the Galil? And the answer to that question is yes. And I'll go into that a little bit later. So, as the player is about to run into this room, okay, he pulls out the flash. He already has shown himself. You never want to show yourself... Um, and make yourself a target when you have a flash or a smoke out. You always want to throw them from a safe position. Also, there's no reason for him to be charging forward here. You can easily bounce that flash. If you want to flash upstairs, you can bounce it off of the wall that's directly in front of him and land into the room. Instead, he charges forward with the flash open, running into this room like they're going to do some kind of event special or something. And uh, Kimberly sitting there watching it. You have to expect that a player is going to be watching Squeaky. And could be uh, because of that playing from Mini Garage and watching the hut. So you never want to just walk in here. If this guy was hut, um, J Sank would already be dead. And throws the flash. All right, you never want to be visible when you're throwing a flash. It's all about throwing pop flashes. That's a flash that goes off when the CT sees it, and you're not visible throwing it. Because the most exposed you are in this game is when you're reloading and when you're throwing nades and flashes. So you never want to be visible during that time. So that was a huge mistake. Kimberly should have just immediately killed this player, but is a little bit low um, uh, skill level. But yeah, you should be dead. By this point, you've made the mistake. You should be dead. All right, changes changes gears. He's like, all right, I'm, I actually survived that somehow. I'm now going to spray this guy down with the wall bangs, and now we just have an inability to do it. That's actually a good wall bang. See, because he thought the player was still there, so nothing wrong with that. But then, of course, he's got a player from behind taking him down. They're like, oh, there's a guy in the hut. Okay, let's just kill him. All right. Let's check out why the Galil is not a good purchase on this round. So I'm going to do a quick rundown here of why the Galil was not the right um, call to buy in that situation. As you see, the AK-47 costs 700 more than the Galil. Now, there's a big difference between these two. One, I mean, most people have learned the spray pattern of the AK-47. Galil going to be a little bit more difficult uh, because of that. Spray pattern AK-47 goes up and then to the left and then to the right. Like a backwards or a mirror of a 7. And most people have learned how to control that. Biggest thing with the AK-47 and the reason it's so popular, it's a one-hit headshot. Galil is not a one-hit headshot against armored opponents. You have to hit him twice in the head, so it's definitely not not the weapon you want to use. If you have to use it, great. It's generally going to be best for a second round, where the enemy could do an, an armor pistol, and you do not have enough money for an AK-47. Galil is bought if your team is buying, and you don't have money for an AK-47. So, one hit headshot, big deal. This player, uh, Jaysenk, actually wrote something saying he thought it was cheap, or he thought it wasn't fair that players could kill another player with one shot. Well, that is where some of the greatest skill in Counter-Strike uh, comes from, where you take a player down with one shot. You should always go for the headshot, so AK-47 going to be the better choice for that. I mean, as well as we check out the spray pattern. It's actually more difficult to control in, like, a full-out spray. The first few shots are pretty, pretty easy to control, so you pretty much go for those burst fires with this, or tap shooting, complete tap shooting, like... You see how accurate you can tap shoot with this thing? It's actually pretty great for that. But again, you have to get two headshots to take them down, so not the weapon you really want to use. So I always like to take the time to criticize the buying strategies um, in these games. As we can see, we have AK-47. This guy with the, uh, let's just, yeah, let's just uh, block out that name. Did the proper buy, knows what's going on. Uh, his teammates looking like they're trying to do uh, some kind of a forced buy. They're actually sitting at 14 points right now, and they're below on the eco. 
they should have saved this round. There's no reason, just because one of their players can buy, to, to do this. So we have another Galil here. Um, no nades or flashes for the entire team. Oh, there's, okay, one flash here for uh, EXE. Who, what, is he claiming he's hacking? What's with that? And we have um, P90. Oh, no! MP or, uh, MP7. I haven't even seen one of those in a long time. That's going to be useless against uh, all of these armor helmets here. And uh, as well as a, an auto shotty. I don't even know. Don't ever use the auto shotty. If you're going to use a shotgun, use the Mag 7 on CT side, which is a really great shotgun, or the Nova. You can actually get some, some great headshots with the Nova. So yeah, none of these weapons is, uh, is, is going to really help them at all in this round. This round is just a huge disaster. They should have just saved on this round, gotten the uh, counter-terrorist to 13 points. Then they would have had a chance to put themselves at 14, a good chance of winning the game. I hit the Windows key. We're back. I hit the Windows key on my keyboard. Goodness. All right, so let's continue with this round. Let's actually watch it since this is more of like a team failure. We'll watch it in slow motion, and we'll see what happens here. Okay, terrorists have called to take upstairs. First mistake. You need to blow out this door. You don't just walk up and open it. Now they know. You throw a nade to take that door down. Kimberly, completely aware. I mean, the door is even using that as cover. Huge mistake. Turns his back. Terrorists now trying to push out. Bag already in position. Looking very bad for them. Maltov and sprayed down two players with two counter terrorists watching it. J-Sync! No! Don't push there! It's a mistake! It's a trap! Oh my, that was a bad round. So yeah, and and, that, and they burn. and uh, In that kind of a, um, a situation, it, it's okay to fall back and not continue to push when there's a Molotov and your guys just get completely mowed down like that. Um, one of the big questions that Jsenk had to say was, uh, how can I avoid being reckless and that seems to be a big mistake of his and I think I think he was more asking in terms of how to entry frag and that sort of thing but one thing is don't run into the room if you're if dying is is sure to commence I mean just fall back and try to save that round so terrorists call an upstairs take and they're gonna all rush out upstairs the um, the way that Jay Sank's team was doing it probably was not the proper way there's better ways to do it. Well, number one, you don't, like I said before, you don't really want to open this door because then a counter-terrorist will be 100% sure that there's a player right behind that door. They can also hide behind it, as you saw, like right here. They can also just pre-shoot you as soon as you hear the squeaky. So never a good idea to open this door manually um, as a terrorist. What you want to do is nade this door. So you have one player stand here as you're running in. He nades this door. You have another player in position right after that door goes down to throw a flashbang into the room that bounces off of the off of the wall. There's different ways you can throw that pop flash to take out those players. You can also um, completely bounce it into the room like this. Then you 100% need to have a player throw a smoke in here to block off mini so that you don't have players inside of mini. You don't have to deal with them. Then you just have to deal with the rafters and heaven. Be, and whoever's on the floor, because chances are people aren't going to be coming up through these vents very quickly. You'll be able to very quickly move in, take the site, and plant the bomb before those vents are really an issue. Unless you have a player who has rotated uh, downstairs and could quickly come up those vents. And again, then you just have players watching it. So that's a much better way to move into this site and take it. When you're coming out of hut like that, and a Molotov is right here, they all try to run through with a player right there. Not a good idea. Eventually, it's a good idea to call the, the retreat and just not commit to taking the site and just fall back and think of something else. Um, also, always an out to just go downstairs from here. Take position inside of uh, the vents. So yeah, much better ways to take that site. You always need to make sure you're going in there with nades and flashes. Pop flashes, you can flash through the roof, uh, through the skylights. There's tons of different ways that you can take that site. Um, just running in there is, is generally never going to work. First round on the terrorist side, our hero wisely calls a let's take outside and go secret. Let's see how that works out for them. So there's a number of things you have to do to do this strategy. And honestly, at this level of play, if you in, in a matchmaking with a bunch of randoms, if you can get the players to actually do a strategy, you've, you're all, you've already won. So here come the smokes. Oh my. Oh no. What? Oh no! Okay, so those smokes couldn't have been further away. And as we see, a terrorist even gets picked trying to cross. There were three counter terrorists watching the outside. 
Counter-terrorists get complete vision that they all went secret. So how can that be avoided? Jason stays here committed to fighting this player. So again, being incredibly reckless, it's generally a good idea to avoid uh, situations like that where counter-terrorists are going to have the advantage. A counter-terrorist um, should have, honestly, uh, uh, peeked out of uh, from the mini the mini uh, garage and killed him as well. They had three players here that could have easily taken out Jsync, but he stayed here and committed to trying to shoot this player at heaven. And it's usually a better idea to try and get the drop on your players. I mean, he knows where you are. He has the ability to take cover, and counter-terrorists can come from any side, yet he stayed out here while his entire team went downstairs. So if he was playing the Lurk player, he should have maybe hid here, tried to go into the mini, um, tried to avoid those players outside, and been a little bit, bit more sneaky about it. It seems like Jsync's playing like an entry fragger should play, but he's taking the Lurk position, so he's really leaving himself out there, and I think that's why he got picked a lot in this game. So let me preface this by saying you don't have to throw these smokes. There's a lot of different ways to take outside. You can even cross without having to throw any smokes. A lot of teams um, don't use them. But if you call the strat as, let's charge outside, let's throw the smokes down so they can't get vision, and we'll get down secret. By the way, be careful when you go down those stairs. Um, you need to be able to smoke off this area if that's what you're planning to do. They won't be able to shoot you as you cross, and at the same time, they won't have very much intel. The only thing they can really call is, some of them got down secret. So you need to land those smokes, and you can see me practicing beforehand here. Like one somewhere around here to block off this area, and one around here to block off this area. They'll have no vision. You, it takes two smokes to do this. All right, so I don't, I don't really like using the view models to line up for smokes, because that's going to be different for everybody, so it's the resolution and everything. So you really need to find out what works for your settings. But I like to find this area here with the, um, in between the two fences where this big thing meets the, uh, the corner. Just as a sort of a standard thing, so you can set up and do the same thing every time when you do these smokes. You need to learn what works for you. And then I look at the silo, and I, I go up this line here, and I go up until it's the same height as the uh, the light, and I throw that. And this should be the first one to block off, like, right here. So as you see, you can't see through the crack here um, when you're moving out. It's pretty clear. I mean, you can see, like, a foot go by or something. You can actually see them. They can't see you, which is nice. Um, so as you see, you can get like this far. So you're gonna need the other one, which is gonna block off right here, give you complete passage through. I'll show you how to do that one next. So the second smoke and how I throw it with how I have my settings set up, um, I come up to this like corner right here by this blue thing, and I, I look at the middle, the very middle of this big section, and I move up till it is just below like where the light is, like in between where the light is and where the, the left white part of the silo is, and I throw it there. And that's the second one, it blocks off the rest of the... You need two people to throw them. See? So with the one right there, and this one, you get complete... Oh, okay, so there's a little gap in mine. A little gap in mine, sorry guys. But yeah, yeah, you get complete coverage, you can just jump through here, this last part. Um, so yeah, you gotta figure out how they work for you. Make sure you know, have two people beforehand who know how to throw the smokes. You can ask your team, you can say, Hey guys! Who knows how to throw... And they'll say, shut up, just go in and shoot people! Because that's how matchmaking goes, but be nice to people. Be nice to people. Big thanks to Jang Sang for uh, sending out this video, for allowing us to learn from the mistakes. He says that this was kind of his worst match, and that's why he sent it out, and he wanted to learn a little bit from it, um, which is always great, guys, to, uh, to have the commitment to the game to get better and uh, put yourself out there. It is very courageous and should be commended for that. All right, we learned what not to do. That's no fun. Let's get an owl vision. I'm the War Owl, and I still have no closer.